Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at what in my opinion is the best controller available for playing your retro classics on your Nintendo Switch. And the star of the show is going to be this guy right here, the Hori Fighting Commander Classic Edition. Now if you're new to the channel, you might not know this, but I am a huge fan of retro classic games. And I'm not only talking about the ones available through the NES and the SNES app. I'm talking about all those awesome retro collections available on the Nintendo Switch. So whether it be your classic Mega Man collections, even your classic Sega Genesis collections, or even the classic Konami Castlevania series, and all those awesome Namco Museum and Arcade classics. And honestly, I could keep going on and on, but basically what I'm trying to say is that one of the major reasons and one of the things that attracted me so much to the Nintendo Switch in the beginning was the ability to have all these awesome retro classic games in a portable format without having to go through all the trouble of emulators. And secondly, what I also love to do is find the perfect controller for every type of game out there. So if you mix these two things together, my love of the Switch and my love of retro gaming, I've been searching for quite a while for what I would call the perfect retro gaming controller for the Nintendo Switch. So what that means is that I've been searching for quite a while for what I would call my perfect retro controller for the Nintendo Switch. And I think I just found it. And what's craziest is that the Hori Fighting Commander is theoretically not even an actual Switch controller. It's a controller that was made for the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. However, with the help of an 8-bit DOE adapter, we can easily use it for the Nintendo Switch. And the way this controller was designed, I find that it's offering you the best overall solution for playing any type of retro game out there. Now, if any of you are used to my normal controller reviews, this will not follow at all the same format. Because the goal today isn't to score this controller, because we can't really pit it against every other Switch controller, because it's not made to play every game. It's made specifically to play retro games, but in targeting those kind of games, it makes the controller exceptional. And simply put, if we're not talking about retro games, well, there's a lot of Switch games you can't even play with this controller, because it doesn't have any analog sticks. Now let's switch to a close-up view and let's start seeing what makes this controller so special. So first of all, I love giving you guys a view of the box. So when you're hunting for this controller, this is what you're looking for. It's very retro themed, it's very Super Nintendo themed, and just because it was made for the Super Nintendo Classic. But other than that, the box is pretty standard quick indication that it's a classic controller at the top absolutely nothing special on the other side and at the back we have a quick description of what the functions of the controller are and we're going to look over those when we're looking at the controller but you'll see there's actually quite a few functions that are really special for a retro controller now one last thing before we move on to the controller itself i was talking that you would need an 8-bit dough adapter there may be other options out there but i found that this one works perfectly with this controller it's the g bros adapter and by the way all the products are going to be linked in the description down below in this video so if you want to pick any of them up help out the channel at the same time you can use the affiliate links i'll drop down there now there isn't really much special about this adapter other than it lets you uh, connect GameCube style controllers on one end and actually classic style controllers on the other. One last important thing to know about this adapter is it does require the use of two AA batteries. I have a bunch of rechargeable batteries so it's not really an issue for me but if you don't uh, it's a good thing to know that you need this to get this to work. Now don't worry we're going to be looking at how to set this up but for the moment Let's focus on the star of the show, let's focus on the controller. So here we have it, the Hori Fighting Commander. And this is what you get in the box. You have the wireless adapter here, and you have the controller itself. Now we'll put the adapter aside, because we'll look at that a little bit later when I show you how to set all this up. Now the first special thing to note about this controller is that it has six face buttons. You have Y, X, B, and A, and you have L and R. Normally you would think that the shoulder buttons would then be ZR and ZL. However, in the case of the Hori Commander, 
they are actually copies of the L and R buttons in trigger format. So let's take a quick look at that. So as you can see, we have R and we have L, not ZR and ZL. What that basically means is that functionality-wise, these buttons are exact copies of the face buttons. And your first instinct might just be thinking, well, this is a waste. Why would you want two times the same buttons? But here is the first reason why I love this controller. And the fact is that you can either play as a Super Nintendo controller using four face buttons and your triggers, which was the way the classic Super Nintendo controller was set up, or you can put the triggers aside and you can use the six face buttons the way the classic Genesis controllers were set up. And so far, to my knowledge, this is the first controller that allows this without having a special program to remap the buttons. Now, at this point, I'm going to mention, however, that is also the only one inconvenience is that since there are absolutely no ZL or ZR buttons, there's no way to access the rewind menu in the classic Nintendo apps. And I don't want to start a huge debate, but if you're playing the classic games and you want to get the real classic experience, well, we couldn't rewind back in the day. So I actually don't mind it at all because I personally never rewind in my classic games. And anyway, as soon as you're playing generally a game that's outside of the NES and SNES app, those are generally not functions that are necessarily integrated into all those classic collections. So now if we move on to the second incredible function about this controller, it's the physical turbo switches for each individual button. Basically, each button has a corresponding turbo switch here. And basically, it has two settings. So basically, the turbo has two settings. You have the standard setting in the middle that basically when you hold the button down, it'll continue pressing it till you stop without having the, to mash the button at all. And second function, if you push it all the way up, is a turbo lock, meaning that the button will continue to be pressed as long as the switch is on without even pressing the button once. Now, the third function that really sets this controller apart once again is the fact that it has an old school slow function. Now this is a function that you really don't see on too many modern controllers or I, I even can't think of a modern controller that offers it. But basically when you activate this slow, it's as if someone was continuously pressing the pause, unpause button nonstop. It's like, a, it's like turboing the pause button, but continuously. And it has two settings with one being slightly slower than the other. Basically by pausing, unpausing the game nonstop, it gives you the impression that the game has slowed down. And the last and possibly, in my opinion, the overall best function of this controller is the amazing D-pad they put on it. Honestly, this is one of the best D-pads I've ever used. I would put it on par with the original Super Nintendo controller, which was probably my favorite D-pad overall. Now, I know I might get some heat for that last comment, but seriously, till you've actually tried this controller, don't make up your mind ahead of time. Now, one last thing before we move on, what's important to note once again, might be an inconvenience for some people, but this controller also uses AA batteries. So it's important, like I said, to have AA batteries on hand if you wanna use this setup, or like me, to have a bunch of rechargeable batteries so you actually never have to buy them again. So now let's go through the setup. Now, basically what you need to know about this 8-bit DO uh, adapter here is that it actually acts like its own Bluetooth controller. So setting this up is much like setting up a new Bluetooth controller on your Switch. Now, when I'm gonna turn this on, you're gonna see it's automatically gonna pop up because it's already been um, synced on my Switch. However, I'm going to redo the syncing process with you so that you guys can see everything. So first things is you turn on your 8-bit DO adapter Normally, it won't pop up right away like it does for me. Normally, it'll just basically turn on. Next thing you do is you have to hold down the pairing button till the blue light in the middle flashes rapidly. Once it flashes rapidly, you just go into your change grip order for your controllers and you wait till your Nintendo Switch picks up the adapter. Once it picks up the adapter, 
like I said, it shows up as a pro controller. At that point, the only thing you have left to do is pop in your Hori wireless adapter. And from there on out, your controller is good to go. You have full control of your switch through your Hori Fighting Commander. Now there's one last thing we need to look through. This 8-bit DO adapter doesn't only make the connection to your controller. It actually also acts as your home and your capture button when your controller doesn't actually have those functions. So for example, if I wanted to pop up my home menu, I would use the red button on the 8-bit DO adapter. It actually acts exactly as the home button throughout any gameplay. And the green button acts like the capture button. So as you see, I just took a screen capture using the green button. So even though your controller doesn't have those functions, you're not going to be missing out. You're not going to be having any problem leaving your games while you're playing them. You have your home and your capture button right here on the adapter. So there we have it. For all those reasons, I call the Hori Fighting Commander my perfect retro controller for the Nintendo Switch. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of other excellent controllers out there. The actual reproductions of the SNES controller and the NES controller are great options. However, they're really great options for specifically their individual apps. Once you get into the other retro games, like I said, the Sega Classic collections, or more specifically, retro fighting games like Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, those controllers sort of lose a little bit of their shine because they're not perfectly set up in the old arcade style of the Sega Genesis controller. And on top of that, those controllers are not offering you the turbo functionality, which in some retro games is actually much more useful than modern games, or even that wacky slow function. If you ever want to try it, it's actually something really, really fun to try in some games. And lastly, the D-pad is just amazing on this controller. Like I said, it's, it's one of my top D-pads overall in all consoles. And I've got to say, even comparing to the 8-bit DO controllers out there, like the SN30 Pro, the regular SN30, or even the 8-bit DO 02, the Hori Fighting Commander really outdoes each one of those controllers in functionality and quality of the button inputs. And it's not saying those controllers aren't awesome. They, they are really, really solid, really good controllers, but they get beat out by this controller. And it's just too bad that Hori doesn't make a specific Nintendo Switch version of this because no other controller right now on the, that is specifically made directly for the Nintendo Switch is offering you this. And it's just too bad because price-wise, Unless you're lucky like me and I picked them up on liquidation in an EB Games for 10 bucks, they sell around 20 bucks and you have to throw in about another 15 to 20 dollars for that 8 bit DO adapter. So it's maybe not the cheapest option out there, but in my opinion, it really is the best. And the only major drawbacks that I can see to this setup is unfortunately. Yes, it does take AA batteries and you do need four of them. And secondly, unfortunately, because there are absolutely no ZR and ZL triggers, you really can't use the rewind function in the SNES and NES apps. But if we're talking about pure retro experience, guys, this is the way to go. So this is going to be a shorter video today because like I said, we're not going through all the scoring and all that. But I hope you guys liked it nonetheless. Please drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. It does help the channel out a lot and will help me get more regular content to you. If you want to pick up any of the products you saw today, I'm going to be linking them in the product description down below. So please use those links. It does help the channel out a lot. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in the next one.